this is gonna be a little slower for easier stopping and starting and catching details. Now I'm just gonna be real honest. I was figuring this out as I painted it. I had an idea of how I wanted to do it, but I really did figure it out as I went along. And this is what I learned. Using, there's a reason why people use watercolor to paint shells and you really can, if you water your acrylic paint down, use it just like watercolor. And there's a transparency there which allows your eye to detect the layers underneath and it's going to give your shell more depth. In addition to using plenty of water to build your layers, I want you to watch for your paint blending too much. You may have to dry it on occasion to keep from blending the whole thing into one color. You definitely want variation. And normally we would not have a dark black outline for painting, but this is going to go on a background and you're going to cut it out and we're going to do the gold edge, but you can lighten up your edge as much as you like if you're going to leave your oyster natural on your canvas. I recommend looking at some photographs of some actual oyster shells for inspiration and definitely don't try to mimic every move that I'm creating here because I am going back and forth and changing things up and I'm my canvas is making a lot of decisions for me. The way the paint is going on is making decisions and I'm just approaching design one design decision at a time. It took me probably about 15, 10, 15 minutes to paint each oyster shell. So, but you could do them in parts you could do the outline for a few and then get your base layer and then kind of build them up um, all at the same time build several at a time and then work on your top layers but if you want to work on wet wet on wet you'll need to do them one at a time and the advantage to working wet on wet is you can blend a little and feather things out a little more easily but either way, we're building layers, so don't sweat um, not being able to blend everything in because honestly, that's not the goal. And the little squiggly lines that you'll see me using kind of give it just a little bit more of a whimsical, artistic, cartoony quality that suggests that we're not trying to paint a beautifully realistic oyster shell here. I'm going to add a little blue to this one as you'll see in a minute and you can do that as well. You could even make it a little pink on the inside in places. There's so many different types of oyster shells and the light reflects on them they look different when they're dry versus when they're wet. So there really are no rules. Just as long as you end up with a balanced piece that is pleasing to your eye, you have succeeded. So feel free to stop and start and pause this video as much as you need to catch little details but definitely pay more attention to what's happening on your watercolor paper than what is happening here because ultimately yours is going to be totally different and I'm going to guess even better.
these metallic details are definitely optional but they were my favorite and I really think it brought these shells up a notch and just gave that nice little shine that you see on the shell when you first find it with the water washing over it. This metallic, optional metallic edge could be gold, silver, or copper. Now it's your turn. Be sure and post your oysters in the creative community. See you in the next video.